What is the most fundamental quality of successful leadership? Is it integrity? Ambition? Is it language skills? Is it an MBA degree? A recent study on Forbes suggested something completely different. It suggested that the most fundamental quality of successful leadership is quite simply the ability to tell a story. Or in other words, the ability to set a vision for a group of people, to inspire them, and to mentor them through the most challenging times and reach a conclusion together. So essentially, a great leader is someone who simply has a brilliant story or has been able to craft one with a fantastic premise, a great cast of characters, and a plan for reaching their grand finale, the grand conclusion of the story. And oddly enough, the most successful corporations of our world today function very much like a bedtime story. Now, how many of us here today have actually been specifically taught the skill of telling an effective story? I know I wasn't, although I'm really trying to tell you one right now. It wasn't inspired in my schooling. And I'm guessing it wasn't for many of you also. But the problem is even more fundamental. In order for you to tell a good story, you need a good story to tell. And quite often, we go through these cycles of education, we graduate from university, and suddenly we're part of someone else's story. Part of a story that the few people in this world have created, that you have joined. And very often, these stories don't resonate with us. They don't, they don't resonate with our values. They don't inspire our ambitions, our passions. Sure, they give you a livable wage and yield above average results, but they don't help you define your personal story. I was one of these people. When I was graduating business school in Wisconsin, I was ready to take my business degree to the highest bidder. And sure, I would have a livable wage, and I definitely have many happy hours at the bar after work. My question to you today is, are you living someone else's story? See, I was lucky because Upon graduating business school, one of my friends from college told me about this program called Teach for America that recruited graduates to go teach in America's most underserved public schools for a term of two years. And so that September, I was not in a New York high-rise working for some massive advertising conglomerate. I was in a poverty-stricken Arizona public school teaching kids with special education needs. For some of you, that might not sound too glamorous. That might not sound success, like success or successful, right? But that was the exact moment when I started defining my story and started defining my path. Because I wasn't just teaching in a school. I was teaching kids who were really different to me. Just to give you background, I come from a great family, two parents. They gave me everything I possibly could want, and they valued education. And all of a sudden, I found myself in a classroom with kids who were coming from poverty, and they were hungry, and they faced sexual abuse and psychological abuse. What was I to do in that classroom? There was a lot of skills that my organization helped me develop, but most importantly, I realized very quickly that the most important skill that I could transfer to my kids was the ability to tell a story and to craft one for themselves. And in essence, my function every day was to create a story that would replace their tragedy, replace their tragedy with a story of dramatic possibility. It's weird because as I was 
completing my two years in the classroom, I realized that I was the one who was being changed by my students, by my kids. This was the secret irony of this experience. And so my life morphed into this obsessive, comp compulsive desire to share that truth that I found with others. And I was convinced that if I was able to find my story through teaching, then others would be able to do that also. And that is exactly how Teach for Armenia was born, the organization that I lead now with my team. It has a very, very simple mission. Its mission is to help our generation and our kids, our students, define their own narrative and their own story, even the last child in the very last village of Armenia, to help them find his or her own story. So fast forward a few years, we have fellows of our own working at Teach for Armenia, over 40 of them right now. And one of them recently told me, you know, beyond teaching history, I want my kids to know who they are. I want them to take ownership of their learning. I want them to find their personal story. And in that exact moment, that entire life cycle that I went through, that the doubts that I had teaching, am I, am I a good teacher, am I supposed to be doing this, all of this came full circle, and I saw my life's domino effect take place. And I realized that that experience facilitated thousands of other experiences, and now our fellows are facilitating thousands of personal stories all across our country. And that is amazing. So that's how I found my personal story. But there's a few ways you can do this. Some like to travel to India, meditate. Steve Jobs did this. This is totally valid. He definitely found the great inspirations of his life there and gave us what we know and what we love today. But I have a softer side for the other side of the apple. I have a softer spot for the other side of the apple. For uh, Steve Jobs co-founder Steve Wozniak, who started his career as a regular public school teacher. And Hugh Jackman, who was a acting teacher, Sting was a music teacher, and Alibaba's CEO, Jack Ma, was a regular English teacher in China. This is not a coincidence. I truly feel that the best and quickest way you can find your own story is by becoming a teacher and preferably in a community completely different to yours. Because it is only in that experience, when you push your limits, when you are physically exhausted, when you redefine all of your priorities, your values, it is in that moment that you take charge of your narrative. And you have the wisdom and the distance to be your own author. And as my favorite Russian writer, said to paraphrase him, you are always talking about changing the world, you are never talking about changing yourself. By teaching others, by giving our generations the skill and the power of the story, you are able to do both. Thank you.